very warm welcome to our morning prayer for Sunday the 28th of June. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Well now we're going to sing our first song which is who has held the oceans in his hands. As ever, you can sing along at home or just listen and worship in your hearts. Who has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to rejoice. Behold our God, seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Who has given counsel to the Lord, who can question any of His words? Who can teach the one who knows all things? Who can fathom all his wondrous deeds? Behold our God, seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Who has felt the nails upon His hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man? God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus, Saviour, risen now to reign. Behold our God, seated on his throne, come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us 
and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we'll keep a few moments of silence as we remember God's presence here with us. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Well now we'll have our reading from the Bible, and this is from Romans chapter 12, verses 17 221. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friend. But leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Over the next few weeks, as the lockdown continues to be relaxed, we will be seeing far more of one another, which is wonderful. But we'll also be seeing more of the challenging and difficult people in our lives. The tactless friend, the relative who puts us on edge, the colleague who puts us down. And these last few verses of Romans 12 show us how we can respond to those people and how not to respond. And they also give us some reasons why. So what are we not to do? Well, we're not to treat fire with fire or trade insult with insult. As verse 17 says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. You may be tempting, of course. I've never met a critic who didn't have a demonstrably imperfect life. But we're not to do that. Rather, as it goes on to say in verse 19, do not take revenge, my friends. Instead, we are to respond with grace and mercy, to take a deep breath, to count to ten, to leave the room or delete the email, whatever it takes whatever works for us. So what are we to do? Well, Romans 12 tells us three things that we can do. So verse 17 again, be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Sometimes it helps to 
ask ourselves, well, how would I respond if my friends or family could see me in this situation or hear this conversation or read this email? And of course, God always can. And then verse 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. We're not to think of ourselves as being on a war footing, but rather a peace footing. Of course, other people may have their own ideas, but we can at least think to ourselves, well, I'm not going to join in with this conflict. You can do what you like. We live at peace at least as far as it depends on us. And then thirdly, we can try to do good to everyone. So verse 20, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. We may think of the example of the Lord Jesus on the cross who prayed, Father, forgive them. So we respond to hostility with kindness, to persecution with prayer, to curses with blessings. And why should we do all this? Why respond to hostility with kindness? Well, these verses give us two reasons. The first we see in verse 19. The Bible says, do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. We can trust God to deal with other people. He will punish sin, either in the person of the sinner or in the person of Jesus on the cross in our place. We really don't need to take matters into our own hands. We can leave God to deal with it at his time and in his own way. And then the second reason that we respond to hostility with kindness is in the last verse of our reading, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We don't want to allow evil to consume or corrupt us. I'm sure we know how bitterness and resentment, anger and a lack of forgiveness can be like battery acid corroding the soul. Now instead, we want to be like Jesus, kind and gracious and loving and forgiving so that we treat others just as he has treated us. Well now let's respond to God's word with the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let's pray.
keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love which is ours in Jesus Christ, our Lord. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe, comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin, and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. gathering our prayers and praises into one. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to sing our second hymn which is Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture burst on my sight. Angels descending ring from above, echoes of mercy whispers of love. 
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Saviour am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Very soon we'll be looking forward to worshipping together again in the church building and I'm very much looking forward to meeting you there. But for now thank you so much for worshipping with our online services. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest on each one of you now and always. Amen.